Welcome to the eLaborate Topics Podcast, where we focus on lab-specific strategies for medical laboratory professionals. We're proud to be the healthcare detectives that work behind the scenes to get the results needed to influence medical decisions. Let's grow together and jump right into the lab. Welcome to another episode of eLaborate Topics. We are your hosts, Tywana Wilson, Lona Small, and Stephanie Whitehead. eLaborate Topics is a weekly podcast that gives you practical tips that you can use inside and outside of the laboratory. eLaborate Topics drops a new episode every Tuesday, so if you haven't checked out the podcast, you can catch a new episode every single Tuesday on your favorite podcast platform, or you can go to directimpactbroadcasting.com. Before we get in too deep to this episode, thank you so much for tuning in. Please share this out with your network. I'm sure you are connected with fellow medical laboratory professionals who could benefit from hearing the topics that we discuss on this show week after week. So go ahead and share out this episode. Today we're going to be talking about an awesome topic in the personal development space around growing your career as a medical laboratory professional. Growth is very important, whether you think about it in terms of your career or for your own personal development. Growth doesn't just happen. It doesn't happen by chance. It happens when we make that shift from being accidental growth to intentional growth. And one of my favorite books around Growth is by John Maxwell, 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. If you don't have it, I would recommend that you highly get that book and spend a week on each of the laws because those laws will be pivotal in your career as well as in your growth as a person. And so today, why is it important to grow? When I go back and think about my career as a medical laboratory professional, I've been in the industry for over 18 years now, and I'm not the same person I am now as I was when I entered the field all of those years ago, right? I've been intentional about growing my skills and not just my technical ability, I knew from my career roadmap that I wanted to be in an administrative role, and that was going to take a skill set that I didn't have or one that needed to be developed outside of my skills in hematology and chemistry and blood bank. And I had to be intentional about shifting my mindset and growth from being technical and making sure everything was just right in that technical black and white space to understanding in that people space, because as you move into management or leadership or those advanced roles, you have you move into a space that's gray, right? And that can be very scary. And you don't just get it. You don't just like wake up and like now I'm a people person. I just can be a rock star with people. You have to be intentional about that growth. And John Maxwell mentions several key aspects in his book, but one of the favorite laws for me that he mentions in that book and why growth is so important is the law of the rubber band. It's one of my favorites Because when you think about a rubber band and you think about the purpose of a rubber band, you know, some people say a rubber band is meant to hold things. As a laboratorian, you might feel like a rubber band is meant to hold all of your pens in your lab coat, right, or hold your uh, notebook together that you have all of your notes in. Well, a rubber band really is for the purpose of stretching. So if you had a rubber band in your hand and you actually stretched it, right, you stretched it and see how far it can stretch, how far it grows, right? And so to reach your full potential, you must be aware and stay aware of that gap 
So thinking about that rubber band, thinking about that gap of where you are and where you want to be or desire to be, that's where that whole tension takes place. So when I started out as a young laboratorian, very green, behind the ears, and maybe not even as technically savvy, you know, that rubber band was not stretched at all. I knew I wanted to be a leader in not just my laboratory, but in the industry. And in order to be a leader in the industry, I had to take that rubber band and stretch it, stretch, 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 make it grow. And that means I had to pour into my skills. I had to develop my growth, whether that was with a formal education, and we talked about benefits of a formal education, whether that was with mastermind training, mentorship, coaching, but being intentional about that growth is very important for us to grow as laboratory leaders. When you're in the laboratory today, you may be thinking like, well, why is it important for me to grow? Think about your labs. Look around your labs today. Think about the knowledge that's in your lab. Think about the knowledge gaps that are in your labs. If you stayed exactly the same today, if you stayed exactly the same, do you think you would be positioned for success tomorrow, knowing that there's a shortage in the field, the people that are coming to the field don't have the same education education requirements or background that you had when you came in the field. And think about if you didn't take that time to grow yourself, develop yourself. You know, think about when you were growing up and you were in high school. Think about if you never got any additional education outside of your high school career, where would you be? When I graduated from high school and first entered college, the Internet wasn't even a thing. Imagine if I took the stance that I'm not going to grow and learn this technology. Where would I be today? I would probably be without a job. I would probably be not informed and not aware of what's happening in the world. And I probably would have some other challenges of not growing. And so that's a few things of why it's important for you to grow yourself so that you can benefit in the lab, but really so that you are able to benefit for yourself. Because people who don't grow, they will find themselves left in the shuffle as the world keeps changing, technology keeps changing, things are changing very fast. And and especially in your career, if you want to be marketable, you want to make sure that you have something to offer. We had a recent discussion in my laboratory around growth and using the whole, well, people should use their tech knowledge. Well, your tech knowledge and your expertise may look different than my tech knowledge and my expertise. And you're probably saying, Coach T, what what does that look like? Well, here's the thing. I've been in the industry for about 18 years, which is very comparable to Lona and Stephanie. They may have a couple more years on me. But our experience looks very different. We all have master's degrees and other certifications. We all have that. all have experience. I have gained my leadership or laboratory experience here in Ohio, in the Midwest. The laboratories here could be different than how they are in Texas, how they are in Maryland. So I'm bringing my expertise of my labs, how I've been trained from my school, into how I show up every day. I'm also bringing my community experience every day with me of how I show up. I also bring my any kind of mentorship with me every day, how I show up. If that's not comparable, it doesn't mean it's better or it's worse, but it's not comparable. And that's why growth is so important when we think about it from individual to individual. You know, you can't just capture that on my resume, my degree, my certification, my years of work experience. You're not capturing all of the experiences 
that I continuously pour into myself to grow and develop that I'm able to pour into the sciences in our lab. So, ladies, what do you think about that, about why it's important for growth? And then, Lona, even think about what are some aspects of our our career growth? Yeah, so I love what you're saying in terms of being left behind, Taiwana. Um, And I think about that not only individually as medical lab professionals, but as an industry on a whole, if we don't move forward with some of the changes or look in our environment on what's going on and how can we grow into where we are, how can we make these adjustments or learn the tools to deal with our challenges, it's easy to be left behind. And I really agree with you. Um, if we don't grow, a lot of times if we're stagnant, we could either get bored, we lose momentum, we wonder why we don't want to go to work, we're not excited anymore. So there is really um, a lot of um, reasons why it's important to grow. I don't know if Stephanie has any ideas on that or, you know, I could jump into some ways in which we could grow. I totally agree with you, ladies. I mean, I think um, Taiwana gave some great examples. I had heard um, one additional example somebody gave at a conference where uh, they were saying, you know, when babies are born, they're drinking um, formula, you know, the, the artificial milk or Similac or even, you know, their mother's milk. And that is good for the stage that the baby is in in that time. But if you're an adult and you're still drinking, you know, baby's formula, then there's a problem. Um, and so for many ways, we want to make sure that we're growing, continuously moving to the next level and accelerating ourselves. But I'm excited to hear, you know, all the different aspects of career growth um, that we should be looking at and that we should be investing in. What about you, Lana? Yeah, definitely. So, um, yes, so we should grow, but then sometimes we wonder, how can I really grow and sometimes we, we look at some of the current challenges that we are having and think that, you know, there's no way I can grow in this field as a medical lab scientist or any medical lab professional. And so for me, I start at the beginning, like certain aspects in which you can grow. You can grow by, I think the first thing you need to do is like look at where you are where are you now in terms of your professional, um, where you, your professional life? As a medical lab scientist or a phlebotomist, lab tech leader, where are you now? Is, are you satisfied with where you are? And as I said, a lot of times when you keep doing the same thing, you could get bored, you could lose excitement, and you wonder, like, why is it that I'd want to move out of the profession? So the first thing is, like, being aware of where you are and then look at where would you really want to be. So you, I know um, Taiwana um, touched on that in, you know, looking at that gap. Where am I? Where do I want to be? And that's how you really start in terms of your career growth. And for me, you know, I've been at different levels, just like Taiwana have been in, in this profession for too long. (laughs) I don't want to say much um, more than the way I look, but I've been seeing different phases from manual, from doing things on the bench, to automation, to different areas. And when I got to the place where I felt as if I needed more, I had to do that introspection. And for, I would recommend to explore different opportunities. Um, Explore different opportunities to figure out if that's really what you'd want to do. And when you identify that, then start thinking of how can I create those competence or how can I create those skills. Say, for instance, um, I'm at the place where I've done almost everything on the bench. I've been a supervisor. I've been a leader in so many aspects. And I decided I'm Still, 
I still want to be a medical lab professional. So I moved into quality. I moved into process improvement. I started using different skills like project management. So there are just so many things, point of care, um, IT. But what is it that you really love to do? What is it that you're curious about? What is it that for you somebody could say that they see that you're really great with that? For me, I'm good at collaborating. And so working on projects across the lab, like working with nursing and providers, come really, you know, I enjoy doing that. But for you, identify for you what is it that you're good at and where you'd want to go, and then figure out ways in which you could develop those skills to get there. Um, like Ty want to talk about soft skills. It doesn't have to be the technical skills. For me, my big aspiration is to be a lab operational excellence leader, and I love process improvement, and I love to see the lab at the peak of operational excellence when it comes to patient safety and quality and quality management on, on great um, leadership culture, the holistic realm of um, operational excellence. So I see myself as that leader, both internationally and nationally. And that's a really, like Taiwan is talking about, the elastic band, that's a big stretch. But you don't jump from one place to the other. It's like gradual move. So it's so important to decide on where you are, where you want to be, and then start learning something new. And then you set those milestones. So you're stretching that elastic band, but you're not going to break it. So you know, you're setting different milestones to get to where you want to be. Another aspect of um, career growth is just growing in emotional intelligence. And some people talk about the soft skills. And so it's not, you know, you have probably done a lot of the technical work. You probably thought, say to yourself, I've done all of this. So how can I grow in terms of leadership? You know, some people call it mindset, but it's so important to be emotionally intelligent in the workplace, either as a team member, as a leader, understanding that your other team members, understanding your leader, understanding how to interact with your team, you know, creating that energy, that positive energy, especially now with all the things that's going on with COVID and everything, you can actually grow in that area. That's another aspect of growth, in, in emotional intelligence. And another aspect of growth as a medical lab um, scientist or any medical lab professional is actually taking responsibility. You know, I always talk about taking responsibility when it comes to outcomes. So if you're growing and things didn't work or maybe your boss didn't give you the promotion that you wanted or, you know, something didn't go your way, don't go around blaming. Try to figure out what it is that you can take responsibility for why your growth didn't um, go the way it, it um, did and navigate that. It could be, yes, that somebody's trying to hold you down, but being emotionally intelligent will help you to decide where you want to go with that. Do you want to be in the same place that you are when you're trying to grow, or do you want to go someplace else in terms of growing? Because growth could be another promotion. Growth could be moving from one place to the other where there's maybe – you know, an opportunity or a better soil to help to um, support your growth. So I think that emotional intelligence will help you to make those decisions about where you want to go. And other aspect of growth is just being promoted based on the expertise that you have developed. So, you know, look for opportunity for promotion. Um, look for opportunity for more responsibility. Those are aspects of growth. And other aspect of growth is just understanding how, you know, how you need to grow. And some of those things are just like relationship building, networking. So these are many aspects in which you can grow, but it first starts with being aware of where you are and then having a vision of where you want to be. 
Um, ladies, do you have any other ideas in terms of different aspects of career growth as a medical lab professional? Sure. And when we talk about, you know, career growth, um, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, it, there, there's sometimes when you get into the medical laboratory profession, a negative um, outlook or a negative perception of ways to grow or ways to excel. You come into your laboratory and you look around and really the only way in your mind to move up a ladder or a perceived ladder is to become the supervisor, the manager, or director, and the people in those slots have been there in your laboratory for years and years and years, and the positions aren't just really around. Um, and so that's when you have to start looking at, like Lona said, other aspects of career growth. The career growth may not necessarily be a title. It might be just adding more things to your repertoire, your resume, your toolbox in terms of um, accolades that you have, certifications that you have, things in your knowledge box. Um, but there's a lot of ways that you can accomplish career growth. Um, one of those is really taking value in your performance reviews. Many organizations, many laboratories on an annual basis will do an evaluation, um, you know, an annual competency, some time where your leader will sit with you on an, annual, on an annual basis and go over your progress from that previous year. And so I challenge you to always walk into those meetings prepared to ask questions and to value those performance reviews. You know, ask if, you, if the scoring is on a scale of one to five and you scored a three, you know, next year, how can I get to four? You know, how can I move from meeting a requirement to going above and beyond? What are some of the criteria that your direct supervisor or direct boss has in their mind for what it means to go above and beyond in a specific job duty? And really challenge yourself to, you know, any opportunities for improvement that they may list for you, any goals that they may list for you, anything that they feel like you need to refine or do better in your job, to really work towards those things and then check in and say, you know, I've really been working on this thing that we talked about. You know, I'm really taking that part of my career seriously. Tell me how I'm doing. You know, I'm looking for other ways to improve on that. Um, because, you know, one of the ways to really accomplish career growth is start to value constructive criticism um, and you know, the, the viewpoint or the vantage point that others see as things that you can improve on and really start to take those things seriously. Another aspect that can help you accomplish career growth is simply job shadowing. I, I've gotten some great advice early on in my career. Um, if you want a position, so say if you're a medical technologist and one day you want to be a director, um, look at a person who currently has that job and look at their life and determine, do you really want that life? So if you think, okay, one day I want to be the CEO of a hospital, you know, spend, try to spend some time job shadowing or spending a day or really trying to look at the day in the life of a COO or a CEO and seeing, do you, do you want that life, you know, the entire life, because that's what comes with wanting that job. And sometimes the answer is no. You know, we've had some people who thought they wanted to be a nurse, but then when they get down to, you know, dealing with, you know, family interactions or delivering, delivering you know, difficult news or having to um, do, you know, different vital checks and nurse functions, you know, that really wasn't for them. Or when you look at, you know, I want to be a CEO, but, you know, my day is sometimes an 18-hour day, coming in extremely early, working late having, you know, dinner meetings, you know, do I really want that life or do I want to value some of my family time and have a better uh, sense of work-life balance? And so, you know, those things will help broaden your knowledge base and broaden your skills, but also help give you some insight um, and some direction as to where you want to see your career go. Um, also, explore lateral moves. And I think Mona touched on this a little bit, but career growth doesn't necessarily have to be up. It can also be horizontal. You know, you might be the supervisor in your chemistry department right now, but you can broaden your skills by just taking a lateral move and making, maybe being the supervisor over point of care and thinking about um, all of the different 
um, aspects of the laboratory that you would use and learn, you would still use a lot of the validations, a lot of the normal ranges, a lot of the information that you have in your knowledge and your toolbox from being a chemistry manager to transition to a point of care manager, but then it would put you in a different spot to interact with different people, more visibility. You'll, you'll broaden your knowledge base and deepen your experience in a laboratory. It'll probably give you a little bit more responsibility because you'll start to interact with people outside of the laboratory more often because point of care is often done by non-laboratory personnel. And so, you know, explore lateral moves, and that might be if you're a chemistry supervisor um, in one state look or one city, look for a chemistry supervisor position in another state or another hospital, another laboratory, because those laboratories, those organizations might do things differently. It broadens your skills. Like I said, it deepens your experience in that, in that area. Um, of course, always attend as many conferences, training sessions, classes you can, um, continuing education is always a great way to increase your knowledge and learn new strategies and technologies that are, are relevant to either what you're doing now or other aspects that you feel like you're weak in. I think Lona says, uh, Taiwana says this a lot, that, you know, always try to invest in other things outside of just your technical repertoire. So maybe invest in, you know, public speaking or invest in, you know, accounting or invest in, you know, how to do budgets, you know, um, but, you know, always looking for continuing education. Um, I've found, especially over the past year and a half, because of COVID and most things have been virtual, that a great way to accomplish career growth has been to just socialize and join groups, whether that be Twitter chats or Instagram or social media groups. Um, I found that a really great way to interact, not only um, locally, but sometimes internationally. You know, I've met medical technologists through social media who are, are working in labs in Canada and other, you know, countries. And so um, if you're going to do that, make sure you have your profile and your resume up to date and captivating. Um, but, you know, really try to build your virtual network um, in order to build your professional career. Um, one thing that I have been diligent about is you know, not bringing out my resume when somebody wants to see it because that can be, there can be years or months in between the times that you actually bring out your resume. But making your resume a living document, so continuously updating your resume, continuously adding and refining your resume, maybe just set, you know, maybe a monthly reminder on your phone to just, you know, bring out your resume and add you know, another class that you take, you've take, you taken, another um, article that you've contributed to, another certification that you plan on taking, you know, so that you're continuously adding to that resume. Because a lot of times, by the time somebody wants to see your resume, you've forgotten, you know, many of the things that you've done. Um, and then you can, you know, be, be short, short selling yourself on a lot of the aspects that um, might make you shine and might help accelerate your career. Um, we talk about this a lot, making sure that you have a mentor um, or make sure that you are a mentor, but just making sure that you, like you said, like I said before, have that social network, that network of professionals that are helping you grow and that are invested in seeing you go above and beyond. Now, that does take you, you know, reaching outside of your comfort zone, speaking up and connecting, um, but also don't wait on somebody to notice you. Um, if you're in your laboratory, like I said before, with your, your performance evaluation, um, maybe ask your boss, like, what is a stretch, stretch assignment? You know, if I'm a medical technologist and I know that the CAP inspection is coming up and I've never assisted in preparing for a CAP inspection or I've never gone on an inspection, that could be a stretch assignment for you. That's something that stretches your mindset and your skill set and exposes you to different people and experiences that you wouldn't you know, ordinarily have, um, it can be difficult, it can be challenging, it can be intimidating, but it also allows you to get um, experience other than what you do on a daily basis and outside of your daily work. So um, an example of this is we have, our laboratory has 17 different laboratory sections, in, inpatient and outpatient, and every lab section has what we call um, the laboratory safety officer. And so these are the individuals who have volunteered 
in their department to have their eyes on safety and focusing on making sure that we're using our splash guards, making sure that we're, um, you know, rotating everybody through fire drills, uh, you know, making sure that all of the safety aspects um, of our policies and procedures are being followed for their department. Now, this isn't something that comes with an official title, and this is something we rotate through annually. This is something that people basically volunteer for. But I will tell you that the laboratory technologists that volunteer for this position um, gain so much experience because then they're able to interact with the hospital environment of care officials. They're, they're able to interact with people outside of the laboratory. They're in, able to gain so much experience and knowledge about safety protocols, OSHA, uh, Joint Commission, the CAP, all of the different safety standards that they wouldn't normally have if they just had chose to neglect that additional assignment, not volunteer for that, and just work on the bench. So, you know, look for stretch assignments in your department and even though it might be intimidating or seem like more work, volunteer for things. Um, because even though you may not get monetary, um, fee you might not get the monetary feedback, like I'm, I'm looking for extra pay or I'm looking for accolade or I'm looking for a title, you do get that experience. And there is so much growth that happens in, in gaining that experience um, and being in those situations. And then finally, what I would say is set goals for yourself. You know, set personal goals for yourself, check in with yourself, maybe, you know, make a vision board for yourself. Where do you want yourself to go? Where do you want to see your career grow to? Um, are you envisioning and then moving towards those goals that you have for yourself? Or, you know, maybe this is a time to think about where do I see my own career? You know, we wait for somebody to ask us that in an interview or somebody to ask us that at a conference, you know, where do you see yourself in five years? But you should be asking yourself that continuously. Where do I want to see myself? Where do I want to go personally and professionally? Um, and then making small gains to get there. Am I, is this class going to help me get to that goal that I've set for myself? Or is this conference going to help me get to that goal that I help for myself, that I help for myself? Um, in our organization, uh, one of the great benefits that we offer to our employees is a $400 annual continuing education credit. Um, and there are so many employees that don't use it. And I always say um, to our employees annually, you are crazy. If somebody just hands you $400 a year and says, go make yourself better, and there's no limitations on it could be Excel classes. It could be acting classes. It just is the continuing education credit. Um, and when you think about continuing education, four hundred dollars a year is a lot for an employee um, to do whatever. You know, take advantage of it. And so, if your organization or wherever you work has some type of benefit, whether it be tuition reimbursement um, or you know maybe they have a loan payback, you know, I would say, you know, sometimes pull out that benefit guide in your organization, dust it off and look at what are some of the benefits um, that come with working at these organization. Make sure you're taking advantage of all of those so you can add them on to your, to your career growth um, goals for yourself. Um, obviously, there's so many benefits from focusing on your career, focusing on keeping momentum of forward movement, not staying stagnant. I mean, growth makes you just a more productive, more engaged person. Um, when you are continuously focused on growing, you're just um, a better problem solver. You develop new skills, like we said, and you don't know what you don't know. So, you know, putting yourself out there to find out new things helps you, you know, broaden your mind to other things that might be open. Of course, there's the salary and the earning potential, but, you know, everything can't be about money. So there's always just that personal reward of meeting your goals, of accomplishing new things, of learning new things, and feeling, you know, personally good about your career and where you're going and that you've taken it into your own hands. I think sometimes we forget that we are in control of our own destiny and of our own destination and of where we're going in life. And we don't have to depend on another person or wait on somebody else to notice us or give us an opportunity, but we can go out and get those opportunities for ourselves. What are some of the other benefits that you guys have seen from just taking control of your career and optimizing your own career growth? 
Yeah. So for me, I see uh, a lot of benefits. First of all, you are be- benefiting as an individual when you grow. And I know, um, Stephanie, you highlighted a lot of the benefits that personally um, any individual can get from their own career growth. But when I think of who else can benefit, there are so many other people that can benefit from you growing. You know, your own family can benefit because a lot of times there may be financial gain and there may not be financial gain. If there's financial gain, of course, your family is benefiting. But if there are um, other growth gain, you can share that with your family. Um, you can probably, depending on your career growth or opportunity, your family could benefit from more opportunities, vacation, with you um, probably going back to school, they'll benefit that way. So who are the people who benefit? Your friends will benefit. Your team members will benefit. Um, when you are better, your team is better. Your um, boss will benefit. So, of course, many times they're shining. So you're, you're shining. Your team is shining. Your boss is shining. Your organization is benefiting. And you're building just so much um, deeper relationship with um, bigger network. With um, so there's just so many benefits when it comes to just growing. So not only you're benefiting, but your whole community around you will benefit with growth. And we see that just naturally in nature. When there's growth, there's just so much um, benefit. Um, That comes in a tree, just like I'm looking outside and I'm seeing the trees and so much that happens when it moves from winter to spring that we benefit. So growing is just so much beneficial. Taiwan, what do you think? Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. And quite frankly, you're just happier. I mean, that's a big thing. At the end of the day, you want it, we want to be happy people. So you are happy when you grow. When I look at my daughter and, and start to see her accomplish some of her milestones, I can see her, her laughing and her face light up and, and I light up and dad lights up. And, you know, so it just goes to show you that when you're growing and developing and winning and learning, other people feel that energy as well. They actually, you know, it helps them move forward. And so as we wrap up, I know that uh, Stephanie will close us out here, but one of the things you both mentioned being aware, and it brought me back to some questions that they asked in the 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth book. And it made me think, like, when we talk about awareness and knowing yourself in order to grow, I think this is all pivotal in this conversation. You have to know yourself and know who you are in order to grow your potential, but you have to grow in order to know who you are. And if I could leave you with these seven questions as we think about awareness and thinking about growing and a place to start, because you may figure, you know, where, where do I even need to grow or where do I need, even need to start? But just ask yourself these questions and then come up with your, your growth plan and, and put some of the ideals in place that have been shared with you today. So what would you like to do? When you tap into your passion, it unlocks your energy and excellence to improve your results. So ask yourself, what would you like to do? And why? The second question is why. Why do you want to do what you like to do? Having the right motives is important. That will give you strength because you're going to have some challenges along the way. Think about, you know, people who want to lose weight and want to be fit. You're going to have some challenges along the way. You're not going to want to get up and go to the gym at 5 a.m. You're not going to want to eat the foods that have no taste or, or whatever the case may be. But it's the why behind it. What skills, talents, and opportunities can you tap on to support your desire and close your gaps? So what skills, talents, and opportunities? What steps must you take in order to get from here to there? So in order to grow, what steps must you take? Is it going to a conference? Is it getting on LinkedIn and networking with other professionals? Is it shadowing your boss for a day? What steps do you need to take? Who can you learn from? You want to seek advice from people who excel in what you like to do. 
So if you want to be a manager, you can't just keep talking to your colleagues on the bench about management. They're not there. So seek advice from people who can can help you. Be a great mentee. Be teachable. And be prepared to ask great questions. Good leaders ask great questions. This one you're not going to like. I know you're not going to like it, but are you willing to pay the price, right? A lot of us want to grow. We want the title. We want to be in positions of influence. But are you willing to pay the price and sacrifice what, what needs to happen? Most people are not willing to put in the hard work and the sacrifices. So my question to you is, are you? Are you willing to pay the price? And sometimes the price is steep. And the last thing to think about and be aware about is where do you need the most growth? So focus on your biggest strengths so that you can overcome your key weaknesses. So think about that as you think about your your plan for growth and, and what it is. That's awesome that Stephanie's organization gives uh, that incentive money for continuing education every year. Does your organization offer that so that you can be able to figure out uh, where you want to grow and how to, to to utilize that. And so those are the things that I would say put in place as you are starting to get aware about yourself and get aware about your growth. And one little uh, secret that I'll tell you for me, I'm all about books, especially audio books, because I'm in the car a lot. And so what I do is I actually listen to a lot of book summaries so that I'm aware on when people are talking about different books, different concepts in books, I'll listen to the book summary. And then, you know, usually those summaries are like maybe 30 minutes or so. And then if it's a topic that really interests me, then I'll go and get the full book and I'll listen to the whole book or read the the whole book. But sometimes it's about having a little bit of information enough, just enough to to be uh, a lethal weapon out here, as you will. Uh, But that's just, you know, a little bit, a little growth hack that I use uh, that maybe it will be beneficial uh, for you as well. And I'll let Stephanie close it out and add her last thoughts to to the discussion. I love those seven questions. I was writing those down. I think the most important thing for everybody to know about career goals is that you, you can't look at everybody else's path. My path is different than Lona's, and Lona's is different than Taiwana's. And so, you know, it's not a race. It's your own journey. But um, you do need to figure out what do you want your journey, your path, um, your destination, what does success look like for you, and what do you want to accomplish. And sometimes it doesn't look like a straight line. You know, it doesn't look like, technologist to supervisor to manager to director, you you might have to take a lateral move or you might have to take uh, what you think is a perceived move backwards, you know, maybe going part-time so you can finish up school or, you know, maybe taking a break from, you know, working the bench so you can go back and get your master's. You might have to take a perceived look, work, uh, backwards move so that you can eventually move forward to your goal. But as long as you have goals you know, um, I think that'll help you move forward. So like always, thank you for tuning in and checking us out on another episode of the Elaborate Topics podcast with myself, Taiwana, and Lona. We'd love to hear what you have to say, ways that you are motivating yourself to, to have a positive trajectory in your career, ways that you have been able to move your career forward, Um, questions that you have about opportunities or um, mentoring or certifications that you you should get. Um, You know, if you need any guidance, you know, Taiwana, Lona, and I are here, and we can do our best to to guide you where 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 you need to go. If you like what you heard and you want to hear other episodes from us, subscribe to our podcast at directimpactbroadcasting.com or on your favorite podcast platform. Remember to reach out to us on our social medias or on the Elaborate Topics podcast page on LinkedIn to learn more about this topic or just to be a guest on the show or just to connect with one of us. Until then, stay tuned. Next week, every episode drops every Tuesday. There's a new episode and a new gem from the Elaborate Topics ladies. So uh, we love hearing from you guys. Reach out to us. And until then, have a great day. 
Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Elaborate Topics, where your hosts discuss relevant strategies for laboratory professionals. Please subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast platform and listen to us on directimpactbroadcasting.com. Stay tuned for another episode with information you can use to excel in your laboratory career.